Wow! Coming! Good morning, beautiful viewers! Now I am picking some flowers, and this is called the wood anemone. You've seen this one from my previous video, but then right now I am going to have it in a vase and I am sitting in my garden, not the neighbors. Okay, so this wood anemone is called here in Europe as uh, European thimbleweed, and this is a spring flowers. It is also called wildflower. Our recipe for today, as you can see, is London inspired recipe because I am going to give some tribute to the crowning of Prince Charles. But before that one, I just want to show you how I treat myself with my pollen allergy. I am very allergic to birch tree, so when it's springtime, it's like uh, very hard for me. Now I'm going to dig in the birch tree to hurt that one, you see? This is our birch tree at home. I guess it's in there. No, no, it's coming. It's coming. Look, coming water. Bjork sub. Wow, that one is like a scientist will do. Look, it's coming. <gasps> ah, it's coming. I did something good. <laughs> There it is. So it would be like this then. Wait. <laughs> and then I'm going to tie the horn. Like that. A kind of her. Ah. There is an ant, a big ant. Ah. Then they list it. Oh god. There is a very big ant. Oh. I'm scared of the ants. I should not be, but I'm scared in a way. I'm telling you, this one will not fall. It will just stick in there. <laughs> so, I think it's enough. So, the birch tree water will go through the straw to this bottle. So, we're just going to wait for a few hours. And then, we're going to go back and look at it. While waiting, so I am going to prepare for our first menu for today the codfish we're going to make this one as the fish and chips so i started with some white pepper and then salt and then this cayenne pepper and flip every filet of it and then do the same process again in the other part of the filets this one will taste like sublime and we're going to coat it with the flour mix it with salt and cayenne pepper that will be enough and then just shake it and put the filet there you see just coat it this way yeah that will be our first coating of course so coat every single filet you're going to have for your fish and chips like that just have some patience this will go very well for us so it looks like that messy but it will taste good i think and another cup of flour then put the baking powder and mix it and then we're going to open our beer <laughs> i'm not the expert of this beer i guess Oh. 
yeah, I'm not the expert of the beer. I maybe pour it a bit faster than it should be. So, need to wipe it up. And then, you're going to mix the beer in that, the flour with the baking powder. And then just whisk it till it's thickened. I hope I didn't scare you beautiful viewers. <laughs> now I'm pouring in our frying oil. It should be almost half of the frying pan. I am using my wok pan because it's new. <laughs> now we're going to coat every fish fillet that we have and in the warm, medium heat warm of the oil so fry it in a medium heat and put every single fillet in there and then flip it and then do the same process until it is golden brown and if it's a golden brown of course it's done like this you see it's looking gorgeous so while our fish is cooking and frying of course we're going to mix this sour cream 5 deciliter of sour cream there and mayonnaise so we mix it there like 2 tablespoons of mayonnaise and then I have this rest of our cucumber look it looks like that so I just use all of these like this and then just mix it I'm going to add some uh, white pepper plus a little bit of cayenne pepper and just mix it just mix it thoroughly and look at this consistency wow it's very thick you were maybe thinking why I didn't use so much of the mayonnaise because mm. I don't like uh, this remoulade sauce to be tasting like mayonnaise so just a little. Two tablespoons is enough and our fish is looking very nice. So now I'm going to use this frozen, <laughs> very frozen look potato fries oh the try it try this frozen fries that one is not nice it's ugly look so while i'm waiting for the fries to be golden brown in that frying oil i am going to do some preparations table settings it's just simple dinner this one yeah as I say, tribute to the crowning of King Charles. You need to excuse me when saying about Prince Charles because we're used to say Prince Charles, now he's a king. And um, I was thinking of um, like just a simple dinner for the family with my father-in-law and uh, everyone, especially now that I'm free of work. It's so good to just do something extra, simple and extra in the weekend. It's, uh, I think it's very good to have it like, um, yeah, family thing and all. And I am really liking it. And uh, yeah, my kids uh, pass it good today. So this is our fish and chips. <laughs> you see, those are our fish coated fish plus the cucumber plus our deep fried potatoes and our remoulade sauce i'm telling you this is just mm. <laughs> look at that just ready for dinner wow wow this is for you beautiful people fish and chips Mm. The sauce is good. This is very crunchy. 
Mm. It's very London. <laughs> the difference is when it's in London, they serve this one, the fish and chips, in a newspaper. But uh, in my thing, <laughs> this is not the newspaper. This is the paper that I use when I bake. <laughs> it's so good. So beautiful viewers, after that very good dinner that we have, so I'm thinking of doing something inspired with a Prince Charles coronation. So I'm thinking of doing Pavlova and uh, because of it's very inspired of him, I'm going to make it like a crown. So we'll see how it goes, but we're going to start with our meringue. So I'll start with the six eggs. What did I say? Six eggs. Yes. We start with this one and three deciliters of sugar. And we're going to separate the egg white and the egg yolk. So while separating this one, I'm saving both the egg white and the egg yolk because uh, there's nothing that will go in the trash. I'm going to use the egg yolks for my lemon curd and the egg white for my meringue. There it goes. Nice, isn't it? I am thinking of uh, whisking the meringue by hand. Let's see. Maybe I could do some um, training. We'll see if I can. Oh my gosh, it's so tiring. I can't. Here goes the electrical stuff. <laughs> I know I can't make it. I was just trying, but there's no harm in trying, isn't it? So um, now just whisk it and look at that. Looking fluffy and beautiful and I think it's done. So our meringue is done. It's just to put it in the oven soon. But before that one, I just need to like put some of this meringue under our uh, paper cloth that we are going to have in the form something like this so that uh, it will not be blowing inside the oven it can do like drrr, and then it will be blowing and maybe it will destroy my meringue and I don't want that one so I am doing uh, two meringues so I am going to divide this meringue one um, form will be a bit bigger and the other one will be a bit smaller because we're going to make a crown yeah you hear me right a crown because this is uh, inspired by uh, king charles coronation so it will be a crown for the king let's see if i make it good so this is the smaller part and we'll see the bigger part of the meringue Maringe. This is my design for a crown. Look. <laughs> That's my design anyway. And in the oven, as I told you before, at 125 degrees Celsius in an hour. And then it can let cool inside the oven after an hour more. I am doing this one so that it will not be like super stiff and super hard. The meringue look at that it's looking very beautiful so this is the inspiration of this meringue the crown now we're going to start our own lemon curd here are the ingredients you saw it so um, we start with by uh, our lemon zest so I'm going to use the skin of this lemon I'm using two of it yeah just yeah so grate it like that you see wow that will give the taste a lemon very lemon rich taste you see and that's our warm water and we put a bowl then we add our egg yolk six to bit plus a whole two eggs yeah look and then whisk and then add the sugar 
and our water under our bowl is uh, boiling in medium heat and then we are going to add our lemon zest you see that one it's so rich and of course you are going to just press the lemon mm. it's smelling so good actually very good then our butter so i am using 150 grams of butter yeah look very nice and then i'm going to let this one cool down and i don't have so much space inside my ref my refrigerator my fridge what you call that one so i'm putting it outside by our balcony and it, as you can say it is very dark now as promised i am going to make a crown for the king a tribute to the crowning of king charles now i'm going to add vanilla powder in our five deciliter of heavy cream just one half tablespoon of vanilla powder it smelling good and just whip it yeah until it's thicken i am not going to whisk it with my hand i already tried and it didn't work and it's enough <laughs> i think it's thick enough now our cream i put in a bowl a um, tablespoon and then mash like 10 pieces of raspberry in there like that it will be our first laying for the filling and i am peeling off the banana because we're going to slice it in a thin slices and add it in our filling this is our first meringue the bottom and this will be our second layer and we'll see now i am starting to decorate our crown pavlova inspired by the crowning of the king of england and uh, all other many nations uh, king charles the third so i add the cream and spread it around plus uh, the mixture of the raspberry and the cream and then spread it add on our fresh uh, raspberry and sliced uh, of half of bananas you can use one whole bananas or as much fruits as you want then the second layer of our meringue spread the whipped cream evenly and decorate the crown so the raspberry in there it's looking very beautiful see and then slices of bananas you can just decorate it as much as you like and i will do as much as i like <laughs> it's looking great anyway and then use some dark chocolate me i'm using now milk chocolate look at our very beautiful uh, lemon curd wow it's just dripping down there look at that the consistency is just very beautiful oh my look at that crown pavlova isn't it awesome yeah in the body tribute to king charles the third and i am liking it very beautiful then finishing touches our milk chocolate beautiful beautiful voila look at that i feel like i'm out of words i hope my family will like it too as i like how it look now wow 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 <laughs> wow and then now it's time for tasting i just need to slice a bit <laughs> you need to be careful slicing this one otherwise it will break 
it already break in the bottom there so what <laughs> feels very suspense how it look and how it will taste look at that wow <laughs> wow look at that one Ooh. Wow. Pavlova. Mm. Yeah. Happy in the body day here for the success of the crown pavlova. So you don't need to miss the bananas in there, especially the lemon curd. Make it as good as you can. So every single bite of it worth it. Allergy attacks my eyes, as you can see. It's not really good. I'm not feeling good Gigantic in the spring. Ants. My, let me see how much is it. Oh wow! It should drip like that, and with all the ants in there. Ash. Don't kill them! They will go in here. Yeah, but they didn't go in. Nah. So this is the water from a birch tree. Yeah, that I dig. I screw in. <laughs> we'll see. It, it tastes like tree. anyone has tasted this um, coconut water it almost tasted like that but not so uh, sweet I got my pollen allergies in the later years uh, like 2016 then a friend of mine said that uh, maybe I can uh, drink some uh, water from the birch tree itself uh, to uh, like um, be immune in the pollen allergies so I did and it works pretty good actually it's nice it's not scientifically proven but it is working good for me so I am just continuing of doing the same year after year every spring like two weeks before the spring I do it and uh, that's the process Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoy our recipe for today. The crown pavlova, the lemon curd, and our fish and chips. Bye!